At 6.15 in the film, Wright says, I've studied Jonestown, radical Islam. To, to give his qualifications, I guess, and to give his comparatives, right? Um, I spoke to this guy for hours and days about religion and comparative and connection. And I talked to him about things he'd written about Methodists, Satanists, atheists, Catholics, everything but Jonestown and radical Islam. But all of a sudden, Larry Wright is an expert on Islam and Jonestown because they're going to they're going to implant this idea real early to give you what we're, what we think it relate. We're going to position Scientology right from the beginning with my new invention. Wright says right after that, my goal was not simply to write an expose, it was to understand Scientology. Now, I've done a whole analysis on the book, um, and, you know, and just from my personal experience with him um, alone, that just is the most false statement you could possibly make. I mean, there's, there's you know, I, I've gone through a chapter and a verse, and literally chapter. Um, it, it, it's just a complete and utter lie. His goal clearly was to write an expose from the beginning, and anything, anything um, that had anything to do with bringing an understanding um, about Scientology, he, he got it. He got it um, in spades for me over days, over weeks, over months, and none of it made it into his book. So this is just a complete and utter lie. So he creates this sort of aura of objectivity, which is false. So we get to, and again, you know, Gibney does a good job of, uh, <laughs> like Wright did, of shifting the timeline back and forth. So he's sort of kind of telling a narrative, but he's just really liberal in moving things around and not dating them so that you, and then you end up, like I said before, you end up, it's all in present time, right? So at, at, at seven minutes into it, they, they skip back to Haggis, and he's being asked, what was he trying to resolve when he got into Scientology? And he says, I'm in love. Um, you go back to the book, and he's asked the same question, and he says he, he had bad grades, and he was going nowhere, right? It just, it just, it's just like a new script. And then he said, he, he follows up and says, it could save our, he was told that it could save our, rela he told his wife it could save their relationship. Nowhere does he talk about their relationship being a problem. Not in the book, not in the film, nowhere else. It's just all of a sudden a new invented, a new invented scenario. So at 7.45 in the movie, uh, Paul Haggis says he was troubled that it was a religion. Of course, because he's such a deeply intellectual, you know, person that was troubling, right? Except that in the book, his first encounter on the street was not this thing about somebody telling him about a cult in New York. It was a guy handing him a copy of Dianetics, which he flipped open, and it said, Church of Scientology of London, Ontario, and Haggis' Haggis's response to Church of Scientology, L London, Ontario was, take me there, quote unquote. But now we're doing the movie, and we're gonna really influence the Hollywood people and really marginalize Scientology. We just rewrite the script, and all of a sudden, Paul, the intellectual, was troubled that it was a religion, quote unquote. All right. At 9.10, Spanky Taylor comes in, and, you know, I don't know Spanky Taylor from Adam, but I do know <clears throat> that this whole way that they've edited this, this film, she says she all of a sudden out of nowhere just signed a billion-year contract, right? Um, there's no possible way, and I've been, in, I was in the Sea for 27 years. There's no possible way, and, I, and so I've been, and so I had interaction with Scientologists and Sea members for 27 years, and another 10 years afterwards, a lot of experience and interaction with Sea Org members, right? And there's not a single one of them who doesn't have some sort of life-changing, life-altering sort of miraculous experience through Scientology before signing a billion-year contract, 
you don't just get up and go. And she's going. She, and they just dr- dramatize it. She goes. She says they, you know, they couldn't hold me back, right? Like, well, what was it that you experienced that put you in the state that you couldn't be? But we're not going to put that in here. You know what I'm saying? So it's just really sleazy editing. 